it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about Stacer. Now this is a very Linux specific episode but please for the Windows users don't just jump away. For the Mac users don't just jump away. If you've been thinking man I'm, I might want to try Linux but I'm worried it doesn't have XYZ. My goal is to let you know that almost anything you do on those systems unless it's very specialized software has an option in Linux whether it runs through Wine, whether it's just a separate application or a different application that runs on Linux instead of on Windows and Mac or maybe it's one that's made to run on all three. My goal is to let you know that there is an option out there. Now I'm not going to tell you that you can make your Linux system just like Windows. You can't. You're not going to be able to make your Linux system exactly like Mac. You can't. You can make them close. You can clone them as much as you want to but if you're moving from one to the other I would hope that your goal would be to get a different experience, and you can definitely do that with Linux. Now, you see me use different desktops from time to time. Right now, I'm using the Unity desktop with Ubuntu. This is something that Ubuntu made way back starting in like 2011, 2012 is when they released it, and they went with it for a few years, and then they switched over to, to GNOME, just straight up GNOME, and kind of left this, but the community picked it up and kept it going. It's really, it's really come up a lot, and it's nice, it's clean. I really like the experience so far. I, I've enjoyed it. Uh, one of the things that they had installed by default was Stacer. And what this is, is really kind of like your Windows task manager set type system, but a little bit even better than that. It's got so many really cool features, but you don't just have to have it on Ubuntu Unity. You can get this and install it because it's on GitHub and it's open source and it's available for everybody to use. So today we're going to talk about Stacer, how to get it up and running and what it can do for you in your Linux system and how it can help you make things easier using a graphical user interface. Now again, if you're a Linux Pro, terminal command line might be your thing. You're all about it. That's cool. You've got all of the capabilities that are in Stacer in the command line already. You just have to know how to use them and how to get to it. You can do it with top or htop. You can do it with, with inmon if you want to see different information like this that's being done. You can do all of the startup application stuff. You can check everything and uninstall packages. You can see package repositories. You can do all of those things with the command line. But Stacer brings it all into a really nice little GUI. So I wanted to talk about it and go through it. And you guys might be interested in how to get it as well. So we're going to get into it right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. First and foremost, getting Stacer installed is not super difficult, and they have it for most distributions if you're using a normal distribution. Now, if you're using some kind of really specialized, I built it all myself, then hopefully you have the knowledge of how to go get the GitHub stuff and build it yourself anyways. But if you're on a Debian or, or Ubuntu-based system, here's your instructions. You add the repository, run the update, and then apt install Stacer. This is pretty normal if you're somebody who uses the Linux-based systems of Ubuntu or Debian. If you're a Fedora user, not to worry, they've got Fedora packages out here as well. And I'll have all these links in the show notes in the description. So if you're a Fedora user, this is going to have the information you need to get this installed on Fedora. If you're an Arch user, again, I expect if you're a straight Arch user, you know how to do most of these things. Set up the AUR, the Arch user repository, but here's the packages for the Arch system. You can also get it installed on Arch. Oh, but I use OpenSUSE, don't worry, OpenSUSE also has this, so you can get it installed on OpenSUSE. So that's the great thing about Linux, is that people say, you know what, I want this to run on my system, and they go figure out how to do it, and you can take advantage of that because they've done it, they've done the hard work for you. So let's get into talking about Stacer itself. Once you get it installed and you start actually running it, this is what you're going to see. Now it's pretty small, so I'm going to zoom it in on my screen here. But you can see right now with the recording software, my CPU is running a little below half, maybe about one third, 33 percent ish. Over here, we've got, you know, uh, my RAM that's being used. And out of 16 gigs, I'm only using about three gigs of RAM. And then here's my disk space that's being used, which is almost nothing because I just did a fresh install of this system lately. And it's, it's not got anything in it yet. So down here, you've got a little bit more information, which is really, really pretty cool and pretty useful. 
But when you go to over here, this is where you really start to see the power of Stacer. So there's lots, all of the systems have a system monitoring graphical user interface of some kind. If you don't like these, you can use HTOP, you can use TOP, you can use NMON, you can use all kinds of different monitoring, which end in MON for the most part, NMON, BMON, YMON, CMON, I mean, just tons of them. If you want to use those, that's awesome. Set up a terminal with multiple um, tabs or, or multiple windows that it can have open at the same time and set those up and you have a really cool looking terminal user interface. But Stacer gives you a lot of stuff that those don't with just those monitors. So right here you can see any startup applications. Now I have none right now. But if you look on their system back here, they show you, hey, look here, here's startup applications. And it actually gives you a little toggle to say, I don't want that to start up whenever the system starts up. I want to turn that off. Just click the toggle, turn it off. Pretty great, right? Pretty, pretty straightforward. So the next thing you've got here is a lot of little different cleanup things that you can do now again this is a freshly installed system so i don't have a lot of cleanup to do but whenever it's time you're going to have a lot of things that you can do here you can empty the trash you can empty your temporary files you can get rid of uh, excess deleted you know stuff that you don't need in the system which is really very useful now this this one i'm going to skip the search because i don't use this i've got a file manager that i can do for this but right here i've got this really great feature that says here's all of the services that are running in your system right now if you've ever had to go restart services, then you know that like on, a, on anything that uses system D, and we'll make it full screen real quick, and plus, and you know, oh, I've got a service that isn't running, I need to go restart it. So you do sudo system ctl restart, and then service name dot service, or something like that. And then it tries to restart that service for you, and you have to kind of then do sudo system ctl uh, status and then service name dot service and you can do tab completion makes it a little bit faster and it'll show you whether it's active or not so you can kind of see that stuff in the terminal for sure I mean you can absolutely do that but with Stacer it actually makes it easier because here's all of your services that are listed and you can see whether they're running you can see whether they're enabled and then you can see whether they're actually running or not and you can say you know what I want to start that running so let's just say that my network manager stopped running for some reason or I couldn't get my networking to work. I could come here and I could just say, you know what, turn it off, start it again. Or I could do this one and say, turn it off, start it again. So you can kind of do this in a lot of different ways. It's got this really, really clean system that just lets you see the services that are going. And then I can say, let's, uh, let's, let's, just, let's just, so it's going to ask me for my password because you have to be a super user to do this. It turns off my network manager. And then I can turn my network manager back on and it wants my password again just to make sure I'm allowed to do this. And there, my network manager has been restarted. Everything should be back up and running pretty quickly. And I've done that. It's a very nice, simple, clean little interface for doing something really powerful inside of a Linux system. So up here at the top, you've actually got some filters. So you can say startup status, let's just say enabled. And then this one over here, let's just say not running so i can see all of the things that are not running right now and say do i should these be not running most of them should because i've set it up that way in the system already i can also just see running services and i can see what's going on so pretty great because you can filter that pretty quick and get to that list really fast now here you get a really nice kind of top type list so again if you're in the terminal you can just do top and you get this nice little overview of what's being used, but it's very, very squished together, especially because I use larger fonts because my eyes aren't great. Um, that, that makes this a little bit harder to look at. So if you're somebody who uses probably normal size fonts, it probably looks about like this. Maybe that's easier for you to look at. Um, for me, it's not so much. So I like it to be a little bit larger, but it does make it harder to see everything on the screen because it you know, obviously scrolls off the screen. So you have to scroll at some point to see different information and it just makes it a little bit difficult, but it does give you some great information back there whenever you're looking at top. Um, so if we do a quit there, we can get out of it and then control L will clear the terminal. But here in Stacer, they've got a really nice view of that, which is super awesome because you can kind of see what's going on. You can scroll through here and then if we, if we click on one and, and we can see what's happening with it, we can kind of highlight it, which is pretty great. So this next one is your package repository setup. So you've got packages that are installed through just apt. And then we've got our snap packages that it looks at right here, which is really kind of nice. That's very useful. Um, let you see what's going on, what's installed on your system, how it was installed. And if you said, you know what, I didn't want the apt version. I want the snap version. You could go in here and actually 
So if you said that, you can just check this little, just click the little checkbox, and then you can click on this uninstall button. It's going to uninstall that package for you. You can reinstall the package later, or you can go over here and say, you know what, I wanted the snap package of that. And you can see, is the snap package here? Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so I'm going to go install the snap of it uh, that way. So really kind of a useful thing. You can see what packages are installed. You can see what kind of packages you're working with. Really, really powerful. Now we all like charts and historical charts are really useful. So up here at the top, you get the, this is what's happening right now in your system. But when you jump down here, you actually get this really nice feature of, I can see things that are happening historically. So this may be a little bit more like what you're used to with a Windows type system. Maybe you've been noticing some high CPU usage or something like that. So here you can see this is going all over the place just because of what I'm doing with the recording right now. But really, really useful versus just, this is great for what's happening right now. And then this is superb for whatever, hey, what's happening historically? What can I see? So this view here is our hosts view. So if you've ever looked at Etsy hosts, so if we go in here and we say cat slash etc hosts, you can see here's all the information that I've got in my host file. So this says localhost. Here's the name of, uh, of my system here and the loopback address. And then down here, we've got some IPv6 information. And that's what that's what's in my host file well you're getting the same exact information right here in stacer and it's really a nice little kind of layout and, and very cool setup oh yes we can add a new host so i'm going to add a new host and i'm going to type in the address and i'm going to make it 192.168.10.154 oops i'm not typing why there we go and we type in our address and then we type in the host name that we want. So that's going to be aria.loc. And an alias, if we want that, aria is fine. And then we can just say save. And now we can say save changes. And again, we need to put in our super user password because this is something that is done by super user. But now I've got that, that option in there that says aria. So I should be able to ping aria. And there we go. It knows where ARIA is, and it's actually pinging that, and I've set that up really easily. Now, you could use a DNS server much easier than this, but it does function if you need it to do that. And it's a really fast way to get that done. So we can clear that out. Go back to our Stacer here. So some really, really cool tools inside of Stacer, which is what I'm loving about it. So if you've ever had to manage your repositories, there's already some graphical stuff built into most distributions for that, but especially Ubuntu, sometimes a little bit tricky. You need to turn one on or just turn one off or, or things like that. So here you can see all those repos. You can turn them on and off if you want them on and off. Sometimes it says, hey, you need to go turn on the universal repository. You can go in here and find the universal repository and you can search right here and say universe. And you can see there's a, cut, a few that are turned off. You may need to turn them on if you want to get certain things. And, and you just need to follow the directions for somebody. But this is where you could do that and then save your changes. You can also edit repositories and delete repositories from here just like you can on the other screens. So one of the things I like here is it's got this window manager and appearance kind of set up, which is pretty great to have this all in one place. Now, again, you usually get some kind of system settings area where you can change these things. And if you're used to the system settings, you might like that. But this seems to have some really clean setup for how to do a few pretty generic things, which is great. And another place where you could make some pretty nice changes to the way your system looks. And if you don't like it, just go back and change it back to how it was. Uh, for Stacer itself, you've got some different settings here, and you can go through and change your language, things like that. So again, you can see all the languages that are supported here, so hopefully yours is supported. If not, you could always contribute a language to the, to the uh, project. And then finally, you've got a little bit of a way to send them some questions or ask for some help, which I think is awesome that it's built into the application like that. So very cool that you can do that too. So Stacer is really just a top notch system i've just I, I can't believe i've never come across this one before now uh, but but very cool and again you can resize this make it a little bit bigger make it look a little bit easier for you to see what's going on and uh, yeah i mean just as you go through you get again no startup applications for me you don't need to do any cleanup right now but eventually i might and then here we've got a, a few things where we can search in the file system i just don't use that but this i think this right here is one one of the most powerful bits where we've got the services that we can restart You've got your nice top view of what's going on. You've got your different packages, so your views of your different packages that are installed and a way to uninstall those packages if you want to. You've got your nice historical view. We've got this really great way to set up new hosts in our Etsy host file if we need to. We've got a nice graphical way of seeing our different repositories that we're, that we're using in the system. 
And then of course our settings for the appearance and everything like that. And then a nice way to kind of go over here and look at some settings for Stacer itself. And of course the way to ask for any kind of help if we're having issues. So really just a powerful, super cool Linux based system monitor and just so much more. It is just such an incredible tool. I just can't believe I've never found this before, but really awesome. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. And by the way, when you go out there to the GitHub, um, look and see if there's ways to support all of these open source people, because if you have development skills, do it. If you're a person who can find bugs and repeat those bugs and then report those in a way that helps the developer repeat them and fix them, do it. If you say, you know what, I just love this and I want it to keep going and they have a way to donate some money through GitHub or through their other pages, go out there and do it. And if they don't, ask them to add it because it's so important that we support these people and let them know we love the software that they're making. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. It's your open source advocate and I'm back and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to get out there and get some of this stuff, and if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.